Hi. Hey. Thank you for joining us. So, um, I will start right away with your the campaigns that you have, which have involved McDonald's. Yep. You know the creative, all the wacky, you know, campaigns that you have. Which one is your favorite one in all the? It's so, hard to answer. <laughs> uh, uh, we we are always trying to but do fun things. You okay. know, like uh, it, it, uh, fast food is a fun category, uh, and we want to be a fun brand with that environment. So, in any campaign that we do, uh, we try to do things that are tongue in cheek, that are bold, that are edgy, uh, and every now and then we end up like touching uh, in, in a, on a competitor. But we try to do that in a way that that's fun, that's not aggressive or anything like that. Right. I would say that my um, my two favorites, if I may, uh, one is Mac Whopper, okay. uh, which again is a campaign that. Uh, it's fun, it's not aggressive, on the contrary, like I would say it's like super kind. Um, it's a campaign that was tied to a cause and uh, deliver like some really strong results for the brand. And I think that the other campaign is one that uh, we've done more recently, which is Whopper the Tour, uh, where uh, we, we uh, through our app, uh, we allowed people to order uh, a Whopper for one cent as long as they were ordering from a yeah. McDonald's. Yeah. So that campaign delivered like amazing business results for us. We moved from, I think it was number 646 or 49 uh, on the Apple Store to become the number one app in the United States okay. in all categories, which is amazing. Uh, we deliver like 1.5 million uh, uh, downloads for the app, which again, completely blew away our targets. And, uh, and we drove traffic to the restaurants. So it's a fun campaign, drove like a, a, a brand love, and at the same time delivered some really strong business results. Okay. And also going by the brand purpose, so you have, you know, you have been a uh, propagator of so many causes, you know, whether it's bullying, LGBT, and recent one is your depression. Yep. And you have always, I mean, you have been applauded as well as you have been criticized. So, but you have always said that, you know, you have to take the risk because there will be people who will be criti yeah, criticizing you. Yeah, I think that sometimes people pol po try to make it polemic when it's actually not. Like uh, when we are criticized, it's like 5% uh, or negative. Like the, the sentiment around all our campaigns is vast majority positive. You know, like uh, um, a proud whopper was like 95% positive neutral. Uh, bullying was almost 100% positive. Uh, uh, the uh, Moody Meals, which is like real meal that we did recently in the US, again, is the vast majority is positive. So people tend to embrace that. Um, and, uh, and, and the causes that, uh, that we go after, they are causes that connect back to our positioning. Uh, we as a brand, we welcome everyone with a crown. So we want to always portray that. We as a brand, we respect individuality. I mean, we've been talking about have it your way for so long. So um, a proud whopper, LGBTQ, is about welcoming everyone. Uh, bullying is about going against forces that don't allow you to be your way. Same case with real meals. So yes, they may sound different at first, and they might even be, but they all link back to the purpose of the brand, to uh, to the brand positioning that we have. Okay, but uh, with with you know with causes, some causes, don't you think you can take additional steps as a brand to stand by the cause? Yeah. So that don't you think you can do that? Because most of your campaigns have been, you know, they have been all out there, and mm -hmm. they are like, you know, they made the right noise. Yep. But sometimes, don't you feel, especially with cause like depression, yep. there is a chance you can actually take the cause further and yeah, take we, additional and, steps. And we always try to do that. So, for instance, with, uh, with um, LGBTQ, just to give an example, right. we, we, we not only did the campaign, but uh, we changed things internally in our corporation to increase our corporate equality index, which is an index that's measured by the human rights campaign in the U.S. that measures corporate like uh, uh, acceptance of LGBTQ. Uh, so we changed things internally in our corporation to increase that, and we increased from 55 to 85, then to 90, then to 95, and we reached 100 okay. this year. So we've been working on that. It was not just a campaign. We sponsored pride parades in the U.S., in Brazil, in Germany, in the U.K. We just don't necessarily advertise that, but the work never stops. Like with bullying, it was a partnership with No Bully, which is a reputable NGO. Uh, the, the mental health campaign, it was not just about depression, but the mental health campaign that we did was also a partnership with an NGO. And we are always trying to find ways and ideas to keep that going because we know it's important we always try to find ways to bring that to our restaurants you know like when we did whopper sign which was um, a campaign around sign language uh, we even changed the way we we allow we change we train people in our restaurants to receive orders 
with the whopper sign. Right. You know what I mean? Like, so we, it's never just a stunt, right. because if you're just doing stunts, that will not necessarily have a long-term effect uh, on your brand. So we always try to, to make it part of the brand, you know, and not just like a once-in-a-lifetime uh, event. Okay, but when it comes to like ideating, you know, your ideas, especially if you're considered to be wacky, so how do you like, you know, put it across to your, like how yeah. do you like, you know, put you it You mean out? internally? Yeah, internally. Well, I think that today uh, is probably very different than what it was five years ago. I think that today uh, everyone in the building kind of like understands the brand and the tone of voice of the brand and the type of ideas that connects with our fans. Mm -hmm. uh, and it's almost the other way around. I think that my boss, in our board, they expect us uh, to be doing things that are a little bit more out there. They know that uh, the ideas that we bring to the table, they need to have voltage, uh, and they need to have the ideas that will get a ton of our media and that are going to be talked about and shared in social. Why? Because I don't have big a big wallet. You know, I have like, a, my budget is much smaller than the budget of some competitors out there. Okay. So I need ideas that will be relevant, that will be big and bold, uh, and that will capture the hearts and minds of people in the press. So they, they demand that. And our fans also demand that. So today is much easier than what it was uh, in the beginning. And also, uh, you're one of the most celebrated marketers, you know. So what is the keys to your success? Yeah, I think that I'm like, I'm very fortunate to lead a team of really like talented marketeers uh, now at, uh, at Burger King and RBI Restaurant Brands International. And we have amazing um, agency creative partners. You know, like we have a roster of agents that's like bringing amazing ideas to us uh, nonstop. I think that my, my advice to people, uh, and it's something that I always repeat is like, I think if, if you really want to do great work, if you really want to do amazing creative work, whether it's in design or in, in advertising, you need to love that. You need to be obsessed about that. Right. You know, I was always obsessed about that and the people I work with, they are obsessed about that. The agency partners that we work with, they're completely obsessed about doing amazing creative work and setting the bar super high. Um, it, it's really hard to keep consistency uh, on great creative work across years. Right. You know, sometimes right. people hit a jackpot or a team hits a jackpot, but then it's very hard to have a year too uh, right. on that. And we've been doing that. And that's because people that work on this brand are obsessed about creativity and doing amazing work. Uh, and because of that, they, over time, they develop a very strong criteria to understand what's great and what's not great. Right. Uh, and, uh, and they understand the brand really well. So be obsessed, understand your brand, uh, and develop your criteria. That those would be my uh, my tips uh, for the marketeers out there. And the same goes for Indian marketers as well. Do you have I something it, different? I think it goes for uh, for uh, for everyone. I think in the case of India, our brand is um, it's on the early stages still, right? I mean, we we entered the India market uh, like three years ago, okay. right? I mean, we invested a lot in terms of creating a menu that would be suitable for for the local taste. Yeah. It was the largest taste test we ever done. So we put a lot of emphasis on making sure that the product was right. right. Then uh, then w we now have to establish that uh, right. with people who are very functional and like, right. but people need to understand what products we have. Uh, we we invest a lot in terms of promotions to bring people in, right? right? I mean, I need then people to come to try the product to then establish a routine in the relationship with those consumers. And I think that as the brand grows, and today we have around 200 restaurants in, uh, in India, but as the brand grows, you're probably going to start to see more and more campaigns that go up beyond products and beyond product promotions and, and kind of like uh, landing the point of view of the brand, the purpose of the brand, uh, and all that. So that applies to all markets. It's just that you need to first establish the brand before you jump right. uh, into that. Right. So, I mean, that means like we will soon see purpose, more purpose-driven campaigns I think that's the, that's in the India. plan. I think that um, as, as our results start to come, and today we have good results, and as the brand gets established on the functional credentials and product-wise, you probably see more campaigns that get that are more focused on brand love, whether they are purpose or, or pur purposeful or not. You know, but campaigns that have a, a stronger emotional side, campaigns that hopefully are going to get talked about everywhere in India. I think that's the ambition. And we do have 
a very strong marketing team here and we do have some really strong agency creative partners here so there is no reason for us not to be doing that formula here too. So can we expect the Proud Whopper in India soon? Uh, I don't know if the Proud Whopper because we are always trying to do something new. Okay. You know, like uh, we are always trying to, uh, uh, to, to reinvent ourselves. Mm -hmm. You know, like uh, so I think you, what you should expect is, uh, is to see ideas that will capture the hearts and the imagination of people in India. Hopefully with a powerful local insight that's relevant to the, to the people here. Okay. So uh, one last question, yeah. which, uh, you know, which digital marketer or marketer do you follow on social media? Or you oh my God, I follow so many people in social media. Okay. Like, uh, which um, I follow like, I think I follow all like the, uh, the CMOs that, um, uh, that I believe are doing a good job. I follow like, uh, uh, Diego Scotti, uh, which is the um, uh, uh, Verizon CMO. I, I follow uh, Jim Stengel, who was the ex CMO for uh, PNG. Uh, I follow Keith Weed, which is the CMO for Unilever. Um, and, and I follow brands too to see like uh, what they're doing. And I follow uh, um, like uh, the big like uh, advertising and creativity publications like Ad Week, Ad Age, Creativity Online. I follow all the award shows, the Clio, the Cannes. Uh, I follow a lot of stuff, you know, like I try uh, because because I love the, the, this industry and because I love advertising, because I love creativity and, and because of that I'm obsessed about it. So I want to know everything about it. So I cannot get enough uh, of like uh, of creative, uh, uh, especially when it comes to advertising and design. And any campaign you liked? Oh, it's so many, you yeah, know. One like, um, which actually, okay, no, I love the work remember. that uh, uh, David Robin, uh, who is the CMO, uh, and uh, and Droga Five are doing for the New York Times. Okay, uh, I think it's amazing. It just won two black pencils uh, on the D A and D. Okay, uh, uh, it, and it's really like. Uh, delivering strong results in terms of subscriptions and all that and it has been very consistent like this year the work that they've done is amazing last year was amazing so if you don't know about that work go search because it's really really cool I, will do that. Uh, I think PNG has been doing uh, co consecutive like good campaigns uh, uh, the talk uh, was very strong for Pantene uh, thank you mom very strong for PNG uh, uh, Gillette is doing great stuff some people don't like it I personally really like it um, Unilever historically has been done uh, great things. I worked on Unilever before, Dove, Lifebuoy, Pones, Lux, uh, Axe, Degree. They're all brands that have done uh, very powerful work. There is lots of good work uh, out there. You know, like, uh, and if you don't know where, where to find it, like just, just search on some of the key uh, award shows or key uh, international publications around advertising because they're always like, it's always a good source to see uh, what's going on out there. Right, cool. Thank you so much. My Thank pleasure. You so much for Thanks ha for having me. Yeah, it was an insightful conversation. Thank really you so much. Had a great time. Thanks for having me. Yeah, thank you so much.